Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the Michigan City Fire and Merit Commission. Today is Monday, June 3rd, 2019. It is 5.05. And let's start out with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance, please. We'll start out with the roll call. Mr. Deutscher? Here. Mr. Pollock? Present. Mr. Williams? Present. Mr. Zacknow? Here. Rick Jackson, I'm here. Ms. Flory Schaffner, she's here. And the Chief Novak is here. Um, the next thing that, and you guys are all here. Next thing on the list was actually discussion of uh, an election for president. We took care of that at the last meeting. Uh, the approval of minutes for May 6, 2019. Um, if everybody's had a chance, is there any uh, motion? I'll move that we approve the minutes from the May 6 meeting. Any discussion or a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Communications, payroll. Uh, in terms of the payroll, uh, we have uh, a, a, a payment of nine hundred eighty-eight dollars and fifty cents for the fire commission and the secretary. In addition to that, five hundred dollars for the attorney. Turns out one thousand four hundred and eighty-eight dollars and fifty cents uh, for approval, and I will move the approval. So I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? A uh, second. Second by Mr. Zacknown. Uh, roll call, Mr. Zacknown. Uh, yes. Mr. Williams. Yes. Mr. Deutscher. Yes. Mr. Pollock. Yes. Jackson. Yes. Uh, budget report. Uh, budget report. Uh, currently, we've used sixty percent of our budget, uh, and that's through the month of May. But the real problem is that we have used eighty-six percent of our contractual services value. Uh, we've got about thirty-two hundred dollars left, and I've, as I've said in a couple of prior meetings, uh, I have uh, written a letter. It's been sent to the mayor, to the uh, city controller, and the assistant city controller, documenting the fact that we are going to need approximately twelve thousand uh, dollars, five thousand each for two firefighters that the chief is planning to send to the fire academy in South Bend in September, I believe. Uh, in addition, that would cover the fees for them and their travel and their meals. Uh, in addition to that, I'm asking for $2,000 for the uh, the training or the, uh, the situation that we're going to have when we go through new applicants and then the physical agility testing, the ladder climb, etc., where we pay the firefighters overtime to run those situations. And so as a result of that uh, and the additional ads that we're going to have to do, I'm asking for additional 2000 for that, so that would total out, and I've already sent a letter for $12,000. I had correspondence with the uh, mayor and the controller's office today. They just wanted to make sure those numbers were to good. what? Numbers were good. They're good? Okay. No, I didn't say they're good. They wanted to make sure your numbers were good. Are they oh, good? okay. Right. All right. That's how much? Well, we've got, we've, they obviously are looking at it, and that's what's important, so. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of the 2020 budget, uh, we're currently still planning for five firefighters. I assume that number's correct, or have you had any thoughts to change that? No, I'd say that would be accurate. Just to Okay. Be on well, that's what we're going to put yeah. in the budget when it comes up. So we'll have five, five firefighters, and, and it, have you heard anything about a change in the fees at the South Bend Fire Academy? They're not planning on increasing their fees? Okay, that's good. So we're good there. Uh, in terms of the applications for the individuals who want to start the process to become a firefighter, uh, we are going to hold, ha take the applications up till August the 2nd. That will be the last day for applications. 
in the testing will start, that's the academic testing, on the 17th. But uh, what we need to do, and Charles is going to handle this one, is as the applications come in, he's going to go through and make sure that they are filled out properly. Then they'll be available for Jenny, our secretary, to go ahead and send them the letter. We don't want to do it all at one time. We want to get them done as they come in. The second situation we've got is we're going to have to send letters to those individuals who are currently on the list but because we will get a new list as of January to be hired from to let them know that they will have to retake the test if they are interested in staying on that list. Any questions on any of that? Okay, um, I just had one other comment. I thought it was a great display, Chief, that you had out there at the cemetery. When the marchers came into Greenwood Cemetery with the overhead flag, that was very nice and the fire department did a very nice job of that. Yeah, it really looks great. That's all I got, unless anybody has any questions. Mr. Pollock, do you want to put in a motion to approve your budget? Uh, I'll move we approve the budget. Sorry about that. I have a motion by Mr. Pollock. Second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Zachnown. Mr. Deutscher? Yes. Mr. Pollock? Yes. Mr. Williams? Yes. Mr. Zachnown? Yes. And yes from me. Report from the City Council representative. Yeah. Okay, he's not here. Report from the Commission Attorney. Um, I think there was a misunderstanding. The appeals that were heard and voted on last month, the letters should be sent out this week to those uh, on those appeals. I think there was a misunderstanding um, about the letters, so those will be sent out. Okay. Report from Union Local 475. Afternoon. Afternoon. Mike, I the President, Local 475. Our last meeting, you guys uh, uh, made a motion, or you demoted temporarily a driver operator for 89 days. Uh, certain individuals came up to me and asked me where you got the 89 days from. I called three of you and you guys gave me somewhat the same answer that it was in the merit ordinance that if you stayed, if the, if he was longer than 89 days, so 90 days, you would have to promote somebody according to what the merit ordinance says. Is that true? Yes. Saying that then, how come we're holding positions open for longer than 90 days, there's um, three captains and one driver operator that's been held over for more than three, maybe four years now. And then people are not been promoted that should be promoted in those positions according to the merit ordinance, as you guys are saying, is a temporary position. The deputy chief, uh, the fire marshal, the training officer in the... Um, uh, PIO officer, all their positions are being opened by the, held open by the chief's office when according to the temporary appointments, according to the merit ordinance, which you're going on with this new, uh, with the one person that is going through this, it says it's, it's only the chief, the chief is the only one that's supposed to be, the rank should be held for, not the other ones. Now there's guys in these positions that have been doing it for three or four, I'm one of them that's been doing it for three, four years. I'm a, te I'm, a te I'm a temporary captain. And according to this, it's been longer than 90 days. How come you're not going to promote these individuals also if it's been longer than 90 days? If you go longer than 90 days for the driver operator that you are temporarily uh, demoting, how come we're not filling the positions that, that have been longer than the 90 days already? They're not being, no, I'm not arguing your point. It's not being held open by me. It's being held open by the Merit Commission. You stated that I'm holding those other positions. Right so they should be I'm able not. to, so what you're saying is they, the they Commission. I don't tell the Merit Commission what to do. Then I'm asking the Merit Commission that you need to promote three captains in a driver operator for the positions that, been, or held, that are being held open for the, depu for the deputy chief, the fire marshal, the, the uh, training officer, and the PIO officer, according to what the, 
the temporary appointments mean in your merit ordinance? It's been three years, at least. And the only position that should be held open is the rank of chief should be held according to the merit ordinance. And bear with me, okay. Mr. Nyland, yep. because, you know, I, I have five months here. I get it. <laughs> so, Chief, let me ask you, because this is all new for, for me and probably a couple of the other guys, too. What happened three years? Is this, are these elections, and, and that's not the word to appointed positions yeah. that these people have been put into, and now those many, spots are being many held? Many years ago. These positions were filled permanently. So the positions for the deputy chief, the fire marshal, um, I believe under, uh, lack of better terms, Dave Koss was, the, I think, the union president then or something. Uh, they were filled. Then it was, it was put back to the way, it, it was changed long before I came back in, uh, but they've only been filled one time. So, and... And I believe Mr. Nylum's been acting as a captain for close to 10 years uh, since he's had his lieutenant's job because the lieutenant's rank, it, it, these, are, these are fixes that the merit system needs that have never been done. And those changes are in there for the three years that we spent trying to change it, and they've never been done. So they keep coming up again and coming up again and coming up again. So, I mean, he's got a valid point because the merit system hasn't been changed. It hasn't been corrected. But yet, these items keep coming up, so. And work with me on this, okay? If we decided we wanted to fill these positions, budget-wise, money-wise, is anything really going to change? Because these guys are already getting paid outside their spot, correct? The only time it'll change is when the administration changes. So, per the merit ordinance, you could, the next... Whoever the mayor is first of the year mm -hmm. could put a firefighter as chief, a firefighter as deputy chief, could put a firefighter as a training officer in all those positions. Then you're going to have three extra captains budgeted for the fire department. So you're going to have captains not in positions because everybody's going to go back. Theoretically, go theoretically back. Right. these captains could go back and you got too many captains. That's what happened years ago. We had assistant chiefs riding on the back end of the truck, and it, it, it made everything stagnant. So, Well, my next question would be, and, and, and I think the union is probably going to be interested in this also. If we did this, didn't the individuals who became assistant chief, PIO officer, fire marshal, et al., when the administration changed, they wouldn't have a position to go back to. In my under, it's my understanding that that's why it's being held open, because the administration may change, and they. I don't want to say they're at the whims of, of politics, but to a certain extent, they are. Absolutely. Um, but, but Mr. Nylum's absolutely. Yes, correct. that is a, that is the chance that it, you could take, right. or you could the, the next chief puts in captains and lieutenants, and it doesn't change anything because. Uh, uh, the city is actually saving $203,757 by not promoting the people in the positions that they're being held open. Uh, what's that number again? It's actually $203,757.95. That's including your out-of-rank pay that you get? That's day? what they're saving. But if, okay, if, since you're paying me out-of-rank, you're telling me that I'm temporarily getting paid as a captain. Therefore, you, for longer than... 90 days, so that position should be filled according to the merit ordinance. That's all I'm asking. I'm just, you know, I, uh, the union's always asked to try to file this merit ordinance as read. Uh, that's always been our argument, and it says 90 days. Only position you're supposed to hold open is for the chief, and you're holding open for everybody in the chief's office. It's not fair to the guys that are next in line for the job that have you know, I don't get a job out of this. Even though I've been doing it for however long I do, I don't test. I didn't test. So it's the next guy in line that was a lieutenant. Next guy is the, the three guys that are captains are going to get captains. I, I'm actually cutting my own throat by losing money by not getting a promotion. So, you know, it's, it's not about me. It's about doing the merit, reading merit ordinance, finding out how it's supposed to be, and giving it to the guys that deserve it. 
I mean, I know Portage has the same thing, but it's in their merit order is that they know once they go up to the chief's office uh, and, and get a promo, uh, assigned to that position, when they come back, if there's not a position for them, they ride the back of the pump or they get utilized where they need to be. They still get their pay as captains and stuff, but they utilize them where they need to be. That would eliminate out of rank pay and everything possibly, you know? And we did that before. I mean, I understand. I, I'm not, I don't disagree with Mr. Now. That's what the ordinance states. The ordinance states a lot of things that aren't correct and need to be changed. So, but as, as the powers to be allow this to continue, arguments keep coming up and because that's the way it's written and that's supposed to be the law that we have to follow. So, Uh, my, my question is, and I don't know if anyone knows this, but is there anything that limits the number of captains? Because we did discuss the city, this, the city's budget. budget. The budget. Right. So if the city's budget says we can't have more than twelve captains, which I don't know if that's what it says. That's what it says. Okay, then that's where I think that's where we kind but of. But the three captains the that are. I, I'm not arguing. Right, right, but the three captains that are up in the chief's right. office are in a different line item when they get their pay as. Uh, Whatever the pay comes to, I think it's assistant chiefs, yeah. and that leaves open the payroll of the fifty-two thousand a year for the three captains and the uh, forty-six thousand for the uh, PR officer, which is actually a captain's position. I just we did, you know, you did call us, brought it up. We talked uh, about it. We did some further some follow up, and that's kind of where we got to was this that well, if they. You know, if a new administration comes in and then they pick different people for those positions, then those other guys have to have a spot to go back to, and we were, were limited to the number by the number of captains. So that was that was right. As far it needs as to be changed in the merit ordinance point. somehow. Yeah, and so maybe one of the ways to change yeah. it merit ordinance is to say that you got to either be a lieutenant or above to get appointed into the chief's office. I mean, there's many different ways possibly that was one that of the you changes do it. that we proposed. That so that way it would always be. We were working on it. We didn't have all the, all the answers yet. We kind of got to that point. And I'm just asking well, if you could look into that yeah. and maybe have an answer for, you know. Yeah. In uh, that same next. line, I just want to add, I attended a meeting with the uh, police department. It was a, a workshop that the city council had. The police department is looking to eliminate their lieutenant ranks. The corporal, I believe the corporals would move to sergeants. The lieutenants would move to captains because... As with our fire department, the lieutenants is not, we don't utilize that rank like we used to. Our lieutenants work as captains. So, and that's one of the changes in our, that we worked on in the three years that we worked on the merit ordinance was possibly eliminating the lieutenants and making them captains. Because as Mr. Nylum stated, I, I almost guarantee you he's been acting as a captain for 10 years now. So that's his primary job every day that he comes to work. He's working in that role. And there's no sense in still having those lieutenants. So um, we need to, there, there's a lot of changes that need to be made. Well, let me ask one question, and this would be it, in terms of change in administration. If we have a line item that says we can only have 12 captains or we can only have 12 lieutenants at all, as soon as the administration changes and they want to put other people into those roles, the people that are in those roles would go back, but there's not going to be a place for them to go back. If you've got a line item that says you can only have 12, you can't pay any more than that. I, I, we got a significant, uh, it's a budget problem is what it is. But we got a significant budget problem if that occurs. The issue is the merit ordinance contradicts that. The merit ordinance says... No. I'm with you. Right. I understand so, that. But I, I, if you're going to do this, then you've got to get together, in my opinion, with the city controller, and we've got to talk about the budgetary problem that would ensue, in my opinion, uh, because somebody has to be aware of that. Just throwing it out there. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and something to kind of add on this, that we need to make sure that everybody's aware of. Um, I talked to the ladies up in the clerk's office. Um, every 10 years, they do what's called a recodification of the municipal code. That actually takes place next year. 
So changes in our ordinances, if we had them ready, we could present those ahead of time. And when the recodification happens, they said it shouldn't be an issue to be able to get that just done all in one shot. If we had all of our stuff ready. We need a council representative here that's going to sign it, and carry it, and introduce it into an ordinance. And that's, what, that's what's lacking right now. And I'm not saying just this one because we've been through. I've heard like three, three or four, or four <laughs> council yeah. reps. Some were very good at it, but then they didn't stay the liaison to the fire department. So the changes are pretty much ready. Um, right. Okay. I'm not sure I received it. Okay. You can yeah, email I'm it again. Not, I'm not sure I've got it either, so if you would send it to me. Next on the agenda is the uh, report from Chief Novak. We'll be brief today. Um, the um, recruit graduation is set for this Wednesday, June 5th. It'll be at 7 a.m. our time. The address, it's the Luther J. Taylor Senior Training Center. It's at 710 East Sample Street, South Bend, Indiana, 46601. Um, so it, it, it should be a very nice uh, <clears throat> event, and everybody's welcome. Um, the, uh, I'm just going to go through some work anniversaries for the month of June. Lieutenant Mike Nylum, 34 years. Uh, PIO Officer Tony Javieski, 30 years. Driver Operator Steve Stimley, 29. Battalion Chief James Young, 29. <coughs> Excuse me. Battalion Chief Mike Orzak, 24. Lieutenant Jeff Bruder, 23. Driver Operator Joe Zerps, 12 years. And Driver Operator Leo Monterano, 7. Mr. Nylop, when he said 34 years, you shook your head and went like this. Does that mean I can't believe it's 34 years or? Two more years. <laughs> Old business. Um, Mr. Pollock, you already gave us the update on the applications and testing, correct? Correct. Uh, we should have those out. Uh, we're going to have them out easily by the 1st of July. Hopefully, we're going to have them, the uh, notices in terms of signing up. Uh, hopefully before the 1st of July, and I take them around all the fire houses, work one, uh, Ivy Tech, et al. Uh, and I also have to say that one of our great sources of getting applications has been from individuals on the fire department. So if you've got a friend or somebody that's interested, uh, please let them know. And if the union would like to make an announcement to the fire department on that, that would be great. Commissioners, is there any new business? New business? Public comment? Public comment? Public comment? Public comments closed? Commission comments? How come we don't have a representative from the City Council? I've been to four meetings and there's no representative. We have one. You you're looking at me when you say that. I'm not sure, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure that. Yeah, actually, the uh, correspondence I had with it's Ron Hamilton, um, Jr. He when I seen him last Thursday at the police thing, um, he indicated that he was coming to the meeting. I kind of thought he would be here. Commission, any other comments? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. All those in favor, aye. Next meeting is Monday, July 1st, 5 p.m. Thank you.